Okay. Uh, any any questions on, on any of this? All right. Um, So the, the other thing is if you want to do a project that needs or would like some credits for Amazon Web Services, um, for instance, if, you're, if you want a faster or larger computer or larger storage, you don't want to do yourself, or you want to work with Hadoop and you haven't made specific arrangements for a place to do that yet, the easiest way is to, is to try and do it on here. And um, I ask you to email me um, if, you, if you wanted those, and two of you have emailed me um, um, about that so far. Uh, I'm guessing more of you actually want those. So just send me an email and say, how many people on your page do you want credits, and I'll get a number and try and request stuff from Amazon. Um, if you don't do this, you will might be out of luck for the, for the project. Um, All right, so we're still working in this um, I-O um, efficient model. Um, so this is also known as um, um, external uh, on the external memory model. And just a refresher that I the idea again is that, is that you have a disk where all your data is stored. The disk is really, really big and can fit all of your data. Um, and you have some um, um, you have some memory which is smaller, um, which you can only fit um, memory of size M. Um, so and you have a CPU which is the and so the CPU and the memory can talk and do anything they want. And we aren't looking at this cost. The only cost we're looking at is um, the cost of transferring a, um, a piece of data from the disk, um, a block of data into this memory. And this block has size B. And one of these transfers is, is called an IO. Right, and so the so n is going to be the input size. B is going to be the block size. M is the memory size. Um, we'll have T is going to be the output size, and we'll um, and. Uh, and we're going to count the number of these blocks we need to move into memory. Okay, um, so B will be less than M will be less than M. Okay. And linear equals N over B. So any questions about this model? After seeing lecture on Wednesday, maybe you went home and said. I have some question I didn't understand it. Where are we calling n over b from here? Um, that's you need n over b blocks to store all the data. So a linear number of IOs, a linear number of blocks you need. Um, to think of linear as the basic as seeing everything once. Right? So so if you think of when we say something runs in linear time, um, we mean in this model it's n over b IOs. So um, um, today we'll be talking about um, um, searching um, data structures, and so the, the, the basic structure in external memory is called a B tree. All right. So so who's who has heard of a B tree before, and who's implemented a B tree? So a few of you have taken uh, the database class or elsewhere and have implemented B tree. If not, when you take Faith Day's database class, you will, I believe you'll have to implement actually 
a B plus tree, which is a little bit simpler form to implement. Um, okay, so um, so um, oh yeah, the, the other thing to write down is um, this this swing on is n over b log um, m over b n over. Right, so this is the time to sort, and th this is often like you can't do a lot of things any faster than you could if, um, than it would take to sort the data. So, um, okay. So we're going to construct. We'll we'll talk about how to construct a a b tree that will have the following um, properties. Um, the construction time, time, or when I say time, I really mean number of IOs, is, is going to be O of N over B log over M. So it's going to take the same time as sorting to construct. Um, we're going to be able to do a um, a, a search in O of log B um, yeah. so, so, so search is going to be in log N a range query in log of B N plus T over, over B, um, and then insert or a delete is going to be in O of log. Okay, so um, all right, so so so. Um, if you're doing this in internal memory, right, you can you can build a binary tree um, right, where you have um, some number of elements at the bottom. could also store data at the, at the internal nodes as well. Um, and so the things to the left are, you know, less than the things to the right. Um, okay, and, and so if you're doing this construction in, um, doing this construction for a binary tree, um, so how long does it take to do the construction? To, to build a binary tree from an, you're given an unsorted list of, of, of n data points? Yeah, so, so the construction is going to be n log n, the same as sorting, so this is sorting time. Um, searching is going to be what? Um, um, construction it goes to be n log n. Um, to search is to find the location of an element or to determine if an element is there, and this is going to take um, all of log base 2 of n, right? Um, doing this the, is for an in-memory feature, not the... Yes. Okay. So, so when I'm, I'll try and use the, the little o to talk about, uh, the, the little n to talk about in-memory runtimes, uh, just to help things. Um, so if, if you do a range search, that's, you're given a range of values, you want to return all of the things in that range. This is going to take log base 2 of n plus t, where t is the number of things you return, right? 
right? So you search for the left endpoint here, you search for the location of the right endpoint, and then you can return all of these things by just walking along the tree. Right? So it takes plus t time, that's the size of the output. Okay, and then you can do an insert and a delete in both logs, uh, log base to it. So the, the tricky part in the binary tree um, is that I mean, if you just build it once and then you're just doing searching and range searching, it's very easy. You can sort all the things and then you can build them up or you can just, um, but if you're doing insertions and deletions, you have to keep the tree balanced. Right? And this, this causes you to develop several different variants of this. Um, what is the simple variant of the of a balanced binary tree that can handle insertions and deletions? Like you probably learned one in your algorithms and data structures. Avian ones, tree. Right? Avian uh, tree. Like a red black tree, right? A any other ones? Avian. Uh, Avian tree. Oh, uh, the avian tree. Yeah. So let's see the there's the red black. There's the um, ABL tree. Um, has anyone heard of an AB tree? So, so, um, so, so there's an AB tree. So the AB tree. There's a lake tree. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, so we won't talk about display trees, but uh, display trees are cool. Um, so AB tree turns out, um, and some of this is some pretty recent developments, actually, the last five years, that um, in a lot of these, doing deletions is actually a big pain to implement correctly and, and efficiently. Um, you can do deletions pretty easily in, in, in the AB tree, and it's pretty simple to implement. And the B tree is actually going to be an extension of the AB tree. Okay, so, so I'll explain what the AB tree is, and then if you set the parameters right, it's, it's actually a B tree. Um, so, um, and well, you have to implement it with blocks and so forth, but <coughs> essentially it's the right thing. Um, so the, so the, the basic idea of the, the B tree is you want to make this searching time and this, I guess, also the retrieval and the uh, insert delete time to be um, a log base B in terms of the items, right? So, so, so conceptually, what's the simple way of doing this, right? So, for those of you who've who've heard of a who've heard of a B tree before, um, what would I do to my binary tree to automatically to turn it into a B tree? Um, so, 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 no, so, so um, a binary tree is when um, the binary refers to each node is split two ways. That's what, that's what the binary stands for. So a, a B tree is going to be um, a structure that fits, that works efficiently in external memory. So you're going to, you, when you do that, when you're building a data structure in external memory, Think of like the stacks and the queues we talked about before. You're, you need to take your data and divide it up into blocks. So whenever you access something, you the other stuff in the same block is also going to be useful for you. Right? So what is a good way to block up the data in the binary tree? Assume instead of 16 leaves, I have a huge number of leaves. So each node you can make it into a block. It doesn't have more than one value. Yeah, oh, okay, so I don't want to just say I'm going to store a block just for this one node because there's a constant amount of stuff here, right? So we can make the That's node as the pointer. pointer. The what? We can make the node as a pointer to a block. Pointer to a block, but what's stored in the block? I don't want to, I want to think of, I, I would just want to deal with the blocks themselves and internal to that I'll have some, some other structure there. Yeah, okay, good. So I'll store a whole subtree. So, so, so what is the highest block I would have? So, so, so you're going to have like one block is, is going to be like 
like this whole top of the tree, right? And what you want is so you basically have pointers coming out of here, um, and you're going to have um, theta of b of these outward pointers, right? And so then each thing this points out to, this is going to be a whole block. And imagine this is actually enough data to fill up the whole block, right? Um, so um, now if this is great, if it's only two levels, this is pretty simple. You build an index at the top, and then it goes to other things. But you actually, this subtree, if this is big enough, I may need multiple blocks here. And again, recursively, the top will be one block, and then you have more blocks down below it, right? Um, so if you, you could rewrite this in a way so it's, it's you, you could think of this a little bit um, differently. So instead, um, So I'm going to have some node at the top, which is my root. And then I'm going to have um, um, so the top block looks like this. And this is going to, so the root is going to have um, theta of the um, children. And each of the children is, is going to be um, is going to be a block, right? So, so, and then this block itself is going to have a root, and it's going to have theta b of these children, right? And so, eventually, I'm I'm going to have um, if if I don't need more children, I can store the actual values, right? So, so in the in, in, the, in the B tree, you um, there's something called a, a B plus tree, which stores only the values at the leaf nodes. The B tree also stores, um, you know, the, the, this has a piece of data, um, and the root also has a piece of data. Here, right? So the, the data you're storing in some sort of order is associated with these nodes. Um, um, so then, this is, is a B tree, okay. So if you have, um, so if I have n elements, um, what is the height of this B tree? No, it's, it's going to be it's, it's going to be better than log base two of us. Okay, so if we've got the B tree, then it would, it would be log to the B of n. So it's going to be, yeah, so it, it, it's going to be log, so if you do log n divided by log b, this is equal to log base b of n. So this is, if you're not familiar with the log arithmetic, these are equal. So and this is really uh, is some theta of b taught by some constant, let's Let's not worry about that constant right now. I'll just write log base b. Okay. In practice, this may be something like a b over 2 or something like that. It's um, not going to matter so much. Um, OK, so, so if I build the tree like this, I get the height of log base bn. OK, so now if I'm searching, if I'm searching for a node, right, if I'm, and I eventually get some, some leaf here, and this one actually stores, stores all the data. Um, and I'm searching for an, an, a data element, which is, is right here. How many IOs does it take to search for here? Yeah, right, right. So, 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 so the height determines how many IOs it takes to search, right? The IOs, I need to recall the root. I have to take the next layer down. This is one block. And I keep going down one block each level. So it search, the height determines the number of IOs I need, right? So just like a binary search tree, the height determines the time for searching. The height of a B tree and the number of blocks determines the IOs for searching. 
So with this structure, am I already able to, um, to, to I want to get range queries in log phase bn plus t over b time. Is this possible in this structure? Am I going to get range queries in this time? Is that yes or no? No. No? There's no one thing. What's a range query? A range query is, so if I draw this in the binary tree, I'm going to give a query, um, return all the elements between 7 and 22. And so then say this is, so this, this value is 6, and this is 8, and this is 20, and this is 24. So then I identify these, this interval of the data, and I return all of the data elements that lie between 7 and, and 22. So I need to return this set. Or, or, okay, so uh, similar to uh, giving all of the students what birthdays of this range or all uh, right, exactly. Many exactly. So this is a one one of the most fundamental things you'll do in a in a large database. These these sorts of range queries. Um, you do have power keys inside each block, right? You can have power keys inside each block. Well, we could, right? I haven't really told you how I implemented the block yet. Uh, so the block, all I know is that it has a root and it has a pointer to a bunch of these loops. So. And the mind said that I could not, using this data structure, without telling you how the block is organized, I could not do the, the range query in this much time. I, 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 if you think that's wrong, you're, you might be right. Um, so so, so it, with this, it doesn't matter how I organize the stuff inside the block for, for the IO efficient algorithms. It doesn't matter. The, the time it takes me to process anything inside the block is, is not counted. You're only, the only thing you count are these IOs. So what I do once I get a block, I can go and order it, and that's free to me. I can scan everything in the block that's free. Right? So the structure inside the block, now I'll tell you in a couple minutes the right way to structure it. Right? But, um, but if you, um, if, but this, the structure in the block doesn't matter as long as what information is there. So, so you can achieve this range query time. So, 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 so how would you, so if you were to do this in a binary tree, how would you do this? So, so the, the, the kind of, the, the kind of ch cheating way maybe is you, also maintain a, a linked list between these elements, and then you just read off of them. Um, but you can actually, the, the height of the, all the nodes, even if I don't store anything at the individual nodes, the number of nodes that are ancestors of all the elements in this range is at most twice the size of that range. Right, so asymptotically, the, it's a, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I go up and down this tree or if I visit every one of these nodes. I can say, if I go down here, if seven is left of here, and it's right of here, I can then, I, I know seven is left, that means I can grab all of these nodes and I can spend the time to walk down here and get them because I'm allowed to charge T in the output. I'm allowed to walk down here and visit these to report them because I can charge for the output time. I can do the same thing in the B tree. I can walk down and find the left endpoint, and I can report all the things in this block which happen to be um, greater than that. As long as, and let's say that the, so this is the left endpoint. Let's say that the the right endpoint is 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 off of here. Right, so if the right endpoint is here, I can also search and find the right endpoint, also in log base B end time, and report all of these things in this block. Now there are going to be a bunch of blocks in between, and I need to report all of the elements in those blocks. Right, so is, does that... Now, if there are a lot of elements there, then this value t over b is going to be very big. 
if there are a lot of blocks, I can, I can charge, I can spend time visiting all those blocks because I need to report this anyways. So I can go and I can visit all of the blocks left of, of, of this node and report them. I can go down to this whole block and visit all of its children and report them because I need to spend this T over V time. The output is large, and if you're asking for the, too much output, then that's, that's your own fault. Right? Uh, so, so with the B-tree, without doing anything else, I can already get this range query time. Okay. So the searching and the range query, all I need to do is I just need to block my tree. I just need to write it into blocks. And, and I can, if I want to store this internally as a binary tree, that'll make the CPU time more efficient. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, so, but, but those are kind of lower level implementation details when you're dealing with uh, the, dealing with all the items. Okay, so now the challenging part is gonna be the insertions and the deletions. And the resulting word balances. Right, you, you need to keep the tree balanced in order to do this. Um, and so this will be the, the challenging part. And so what we're going to do is we're going to all explain how to do an A and B tree, and then we'll basically you set A and B to both be theta of, of uppercase B, and it, it, it serves as a B tree. It'll have all the properties for the searching and arrangements. Um, okay. So let's see. Yeah, so, so, the, um, so to kind of illustrate, um, so um, maybe I'll illustrate the problem with rebalancing. Or do, do people understand why rebalancing might be hard in this setting? Or do you want me to give a quick example of that? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So so let's say that I um, I've got the top of a pointer coming down here from the root. Um, let's say this is x, and then I've got um, so it's it's pointing to a node here on the on the left. And this has a bunch of data in it, and, and also something on the right. Um, and so, if I want to rebalance this tree, so I so I want to move. Um, so let me uh, follow my example. So. So, so what I want to do to rebalance is I want to move so x becomes the root because I have too many things on the left and not enough things on the right. So I want to um, lift this x up higher, then I'll get something. And so this part is going to be inside of a block. This part is going to be inside of a block. And y is going to be inside of a block. Now I want x and it's, it's still going to point to a, um, it's going to point to a left. It's going to go down to a Y, which is going to have this right part on, on the left here. And uh, it'll point down to a Z, which is going to still have this whole um, start here. Okay. So, but, so, so if you rebalance, this tree, so x got promoted and y got demoted, you end up with something like this. But now if you look at the block structure here, this part is still inside of a block. That's OK. y is inside of a block. And x, l, and r are in a block. 
So now, if you want to, um, so, so, so what happens now is you have to walk into this block, out of the block, and into the block again in order to do this. And if you keep doing these rotations, you're going to keep pulling parts of this block further and further apart. And eventually, you may have to, um, uh, like, uh, it, you, your, your blocks are not going to be organized in a logical way. And you're not going to be able to control the, um, um, the number of, of, of blocks you need anymore. You may, um, it, in order to look at all of the roots, um, um, all, all the roots leaves to figure out where, to, to which block to grab next, you're going to have to pull the elements of all those blocks. Or you're going to have to store them. Um, but then this is going to generate a problem. So rebalancing kind of screws up the structure of blocks. So what we want is a way so that this the structure of the block is kind of um, always always maintained. And you always have at most um, B elements inside each one. Of course, it's too inefficient to occasionally have blocks that are partially used. Well, you're going to have blocks that are partially used, so that so that's going to be part of it. And and as long as they're um, basically half full, then you're going to be you're going to be happy with that. Um, but okay. what you don't want is a block to represent vastly different parts of the hierarchy. So you're going to have to you don't want to have to jump. And uh, visit lots of blocks to decide which way to split, which okay. way to continue your search. I was, I was thinking here that the fast way to minimize um, access is instead of having to repack uh, block X, repack block Y, or repack the, the block with X, repack the block with Y, and then repack the block with all of X's and Y's children, would yeah. be to just split block X. Right, so, so that's. Kind of what we're going to do, but we're going to okay. have a very organized way of doing this. Okay. So, so, um, so, and we're going to follow the structure of what's called an AD tree. Um, and so, so, so basically, this is the what, what this means is that um, every node has between A and and B um, children. And then we're going to set both A is going to be less than B, and both A and B are going to be um, beta of B. So maybe this is going to be, you, you need a couple extra piece of information to handle the, the value of the, the parents. Maybe this is B. So, so maybe in practice, you have little b as being big B minus 10, and A is going to be something like um, big B over, over 2 minus, uh, minus 20. All right, so. Yeah, and each node is going to be uh, each node and children are only You're going to have the the value of the children, so you know if you're searching which child to go to. So, so you, you could think of um, so you, you you could store the largest. So you, you basically you need to store the split values between the children. So if you if you go so. If, if you're at uh, a if, if you're at a block, right, and so you have two ch children that you're considering, and this one goes from seven to twenty-two, and this one goes to um, twenty-three to uh, fifty, and you need to store something like twenty-two right here to say if you're left of this, go here. If you're right of it, go. So that's information you need to store, and then along with the pointers to this channel. Uh, how do I decide about the big B? What's the big so, so big B will be actually a parameter uh, in your in your system. So your computer 
um, your OS will have a, a, a constant built into it, which is the block size. And when it reads from your disk and moves it into memory, it'll move in that block size, that many, um, it'll be that many bytes. And this is usually set by default in the, in the computer, depending on, on, on the OS and maybe depending on what sort of disk and memory you have. Uh, you can sometimes go and edit the OS and change that. Um, but usually you should keep with whatever the system parameter is because it's been optimized for that. But that's a parameter of your computer. So your computer may be different than mine, may be different than the ones in the, in the Um So you'll, you, you would go in and do that. So one thing we'll talk about in one of the next lectures is if you don't know this block size, you can still organize um, things so that it'll, it'll still have the similar guarantees. Um, they tend not to work as well in practice as if you can hard code this thing. Um, so when you start writing these algorithms, uh, you go and look in the OS and find that, that size, that block number. And if you're not sure what that is, there's some experiments you can do where you can try and figure out what that is by calling, building data structures of certain sizes and seeing um, how, what the speed of, of building them are. And you can kind of test to figure out what, what this block size is. Are you doing well, so I, I'm, I'm going to need some, some extra bookkeeping information inside here. So this is the number of, of leads, and I'm going to need some bookkeeping, which is going to cost some constant, right? Um, and this is going to need to be um, let, uh, at most half of, of B. But so. A and B cannot be a multiple of the same B, 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 Then they should be smaller than B, yeah. Theta means it's within a constant. Well, okay, so let's say, so what would happen if you said it was two, it was two times B instead? But is, but is that really going to be such a problem if I said this node is going to be two blocks? Is that going to affect anything as the top? Every time I, I recall a node, I need to recall two blocks instead of one block. It's, then these numbers are going to be off by a factor of two. Um, so asymptotically, it's the same. So technically, to get these run times or these IO, IO times, I can use, I can put a theta B here, and it's OK. Um, so it is technically OK. It's a good, good question, though. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, the DP, the that it's, it's the number of data elements that can fit in a block. And a block is the number of elements transferred from a disk to the memory every time you call an IO. So this is how the, the OS works. All right, so, um, so the, as this property, you also have a, have a note that the, the root, though, has um, between 2 and B. Um, so the, the root is allowed to have less than children. It's the technicality. Um, so so and the um, the the height of this tree is going to be O of O is going to be log base A of of n right n data points. So now if A is theta of b, then this is basically log of log base b. Um, um, well, so if you're if you're doing so, so 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 I don't need the O notation here because I know each node is going to be. As at least a things. So that means the height is going to be at at most log base a of that. That's the worst case height. So when you, so anytime you write a runtime, you really want to use the big O because different operations are off by constant in their, in their cost. So really you can't count exactly, but height is something I can actually count exactly. Well, even with, with constants. Um, okay, so um, so, so if I'm going to do an, um, an insert operation, 
gives us some for some value x. So I'm going to search for x at v, v. Right. and then I'm going to uh, if v has um, so um, so and then I'm going to um, store x um, store x at, at v. If um, if v has v plus one um, um, items, then I violated the condition of my trick. Right, so, so I have too many items stored at this week. Can you slide over to the people that said we're in yeah. So I have, I have too many items at this leaf node because I have B plus one items there. So, um, so what do I need to do? So, so I need to go up to the parent. I need to, um, uh, so, um, so I, I need to split B into d prime and d prime plus one, where I'm going to pick some. Um, so I'm going to have that a is less than b over two. That's really cool. And I'm going to pick some value um, that splits these into, into two uh, sets, and they're each going to have value at least a, and it's going to be less than b. And I'm going to um, insert. Um, B prime and B prime into um, the um, parent of B, right? So I'm, I'm going to look at the parent of B. I'm going to remove this node V. I'm going to split it into B prime and B double prime and reinsert this, both of these back into the parent. Now, again, now the parent of V may, may have. Um, if that now has b plus one elements, I again need to do the same thing with person. Right? So, so I need to, um, if parent of b, if this is um, equal to b plus one, then I need to recur. So, so, so I need to keep doing the same procedure back up and keep splitting going. Okay, so, so, so what is, so what is the number of nodes I need to, um, I need to interact with total in this process? Is what? It's the height of the tree. The height of the tree, yeah. So that's it's log base a of n. So the number of nodes I need to interact with is log base a of n. So. Basically, if this is log base B and each node is a block, then um, the insertions are log base B. So, um, so that's not too hard to do. Oh, um, something I didn't, didn't mention. Do I need to, um, if I have a tree where, and I'm not going to tell you anything about the, uh, um, the other property of this tree is all of the all of the nodes are going to all of the leaf nodes are going to be at the same depth. I'm, I'm also going to guarantee that. So I, I don't have um, in a binary tree if you have like uh, if you have like 13 elements, some of the leaf nodes may be at a different depth than some of the other nodes, right? Because it's now power of two. Here, all of the leaf nodes are going to be at the same depth, the same. So that's that's another property of the tree. It's a um, let me write it. Out. Oh, okay. We all There's leaf nodes at the same. They're the same. They're the same height measured in blocks, not at the exact same height counting the nodes. The no, the, the nodes in the blocks are the same thing. I'm going to guarantee that. I'm I'm going to start by building it by having all the leaf nodes at the same. The same level, 
and I'll maintain that on my insertion evolutions. Okay. So. Okay, then if we don't have, if the number of elements is not the exact power of two, then we'll just have a couple blocks somewhere. Well, so the blocks are not all going to have the same number of children. So, um, what, what's going to happen is that I'll start with just things in the leaf nodes. Everything will be at, at, at height one, right? When I'm inserting things. Um, and then if I need to split, I'm not making anything deeper. I'm just giving the parent more, uh, more, uh, more children. Everything stays at the same level. Um, eventually, what's going to happen is I'm going to bubble all the way up here, and then the, the root node is going to have B plus one children. At this point, I split the root node, and at that point, I increase the height of the tree. That's the only time I increase the height of the tree. Um, so because all the leaf nodes are at the same height, that um, the, then the, um, um, the, the, you know, the, this is going to help the balancing as well. It's always, the, 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 the height's always going to be the same, so it's always going to be balanced. When the leaf nodes store the pointer to the parent node here in the street, everything? The leaf node does not need to store parents. Oh, it, uh, it needs to store a, yeah, a pointer up to its parent node, yeah. Unlike other trees where parent stores the pointer to the leaf node. Yeah, well, um, you probably don't need to store it if you implement your data structures correctly every t for your your uh, insertion. You'll have to you'll pass through the parent node when you got to the leaf node, so you can pass it with the operation. You can also store it there if you want to, but you don't need to store it. You can you can think of whenever you're operating on this node, you also store the parent node in memory at the same time, so that you can go and update it. Um, that, um, you're right actually, that, that won't work if you need to go all the way back up. So you do need to store a link to the parent. That's, that's a good point. Because otherwise, and going up one level is easy, but if you need to recurse all the way to the root, that may be more blocks than fits in memory. Probably not. Uh, they're usually B and M are polynomial related, so you could do that probably. Um, but, uh, well, you probably are able to do that, but you could. It's easier if you store the pointers in your character. Why is it necessary that all the inference should be the same thing? It's not necessary. It's a property of the tree. Um, it's, it, in order to ensure that the, see, see if, you, if you didn't have that, I, what I could do is I could have a root that has um, leaves here, and then this one has these leaf nodes, but um, this block actually pointed to, to, to more of these blocks, and this block pointed to more of these blocks, right? And so, so, so eventually I went down. So this one I got too quickly, this one I needed to go down um, at, at a depth which is high. Yeah, it's, it's a way of enforcing that to treat this balance. Okay. Yep. And those two lines, what does it mean if a parent B plus one? So if the size, so this is, sorry, I didn't write out the full sentence. If the, if the size of the parent, the number of children of this parent of E is now of size B plus one. Because remember, I just went and I ins deleted one and inserted two, so I've increased the number of children of this parent by one. Um, then, then th that means that this parent is too big; it has too many children. My the number of children need to be between A and B. So now I have too many. So now I need to split the I need to split this parent into two nodes, um, and then I need to go and. Uh, mess with the parent of this parent and recursively of the tree. Okay, so, um, um, so how do I do a delete? Um, so, so I'm going to delete element of x 
So I'm going to search for x in v, v and I'm um, going to remove x. So if um, so, the only thing, only case I need to worry about is if um, this this size of v is now equal to a minus one. If the size of v is e greater or equal to a, I'm fine. I, I don't need to update anything. If it's equal to a minus one, now I need to go and I need to update stuff. Right. So, um, so how do I? Um, so, so at this point, I'm going to use v to uh, um, one of its siblings, and it needs to be one in the consecutive order. Um, siblings v prime. Um, because I have a property that every node has between a and b children. And this includes the, the leaf elements, right? The, the, the number of data elements for there. So if it's less than a minus one, it's going to be too small. I don't want it, the tree to get too thin because then my blocks are under full, right? So that means the block is is too is under full. I want to sh move it into another block. So I'm going to fuse it with one of its siblings, v prime, right? And so this is going to create from one block into a block V prime is going to be the V kind of union V prime. Um, and so if the size of V um, double prime is less than B, I'm done, right? So if size of V is, is greater than B, right, now V double prime is is, uh, is is too big, right? So um, so if v double prime is too big, uh, let's see. Then um, oh, so so if uh, yeah, so so then I'm going to call. If, if this is going to happen, I'm going to call um, split on V. I'm going to split this into two parts. Yeah, V double. OK, so um, I have one more step here to deal with the, the, the root. If, um, if the parent of, of uh, V was the root, and after I removed V, um, after I did the fuse, the, the root only had um, only had one uh, one child. Then I'm going to delete the root, and this is the only time that the height of the tree decreases. So and so again, I didn't change the height, the relative height of A and the leaves to each other. They're all still at the same height. I'm only affecting the, the height of the tree by changing the root. Okay, so so, um, so, um, so at this point, when I when I split V, um, the size of V double prime is going to be um, between um, B and 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 B plus A, right? So size of V double prime. Is going to be in the range, um, or it could be in the range uh, t 2a minus 1 and a plus b. Okay, so now if I have that um, that a is less than b over 2, if I split v prime, it's going to, I can split it into two parts which fall in the range between a so, so, so it'll work out. I won't need to split and fuse and split and fuse. I won't need to repeat this process. Um, the other thing that could happen when I fuse these, these two neighbors <coughs> is that now the, um, the, the, the other thing I can, I can worry about 
is if the, um, let's see, let me write it out, the size of the, the parent of, well, let's call it, the double prime is less than A, um, then I need to recur. I need to go up and I, and I may need to fuse the parent of the double prime with one of its siblings. So I need to go up. Okay, let me, let me that's all the cases. All right, so 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 this is I, I basically covered all the cases. I didn't write down the case of dealing with the root, um, but so if, if this is the algorithm, um, uh, how long how long does it take to do a delete? How many blocks does it touch? How many nodes does it touch? Yeah, so it's it's going to be log of n base a, um, which is the height of the tree. So that's log base b of that. Right, so good. So we, so we, so we've done done the lead. Um, so how many blocks do we push? Right. So. Um, so the, if if the split the split only needs to happen once at each level, right? Um, so so actually I'll, I'll 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 go through this in a bit more detail. If the split only needs to happen once. That means that you do a search. This the search takes log is a of n nodes, right? Um, and then I go and I, when I hit the leaf, I may need to fuse, I may need to recurse back up to the parent. And I touch, um, I need to touch the, the, you know, update the siblings of each of these nodes, but that's, that's only one extra block I need to do. Um, and so going back up from the parent, I may need to do a fuse at each of these levels. So I, but I only go up, so I'm only, I'm staying in the direct path between the root and the and the node I found, and maybe only touching uh, one of the siblings. Um, so the, the key thing here is that when you do this split, you want to make sure that this range is going to be so. The the you want two properties that two a minus one is going to be greater than or over over two is going to be greater than a. And you want a plus b greater than two is going to be less than b. If this happens, then if you do a fuse and your size becomes too big, you only need to do one split, and then the um, you're going to have the same number of nodes afterwards. So this this looks uh, this may not be true. So let me see what I'm doing wrong here. Um, or or uh, actually, this can be. You could also so either. You have this, or or two a minus one is going to be less than b, and in this case, then you don't even need this one. Is there any case where a equal to b? So if a equals to b, um, then <coughs> you're going to have. Uh, you're going to have to do like a lot of rebalancing. The, the, you you could um, you're going to have to have exactly b things at each level, and you can't actually enforce that um, because you have because this property that all the leaf nodes are at the same height, you, you you'd have to have just a number of elements that evenly split, um, where log base b of n was going to be exactly in the measure. Is what you would need if you have a is equal to b. So you want to have a little bit of slack between. Um, and so 
you can uh, you can show that it works with a is equal to b over two. Um, it's a little bit um, my notes say it's a little bit easier with b equals to four times a. Um, but okay, so. So, so if if you do this and and you set a and you, you set a and b this way, then then you store each node inside the block. Now, if you were to implement this in practice, you, you probably don't. A block is actually pretty big, and if you're doing the searching, you would then need to scan inside of each of these blocks, right? So, what if you replace this block by um, by another tree? Uh, by another binary tree. How is, how is that going to change things? So, so, right now I have, if, if my B tree is actually an, an AB tree, so each of the blocks has between A and B children, right? I haven't told you what's inside here. Right? If I if I put a binary tree over the splitting points of all the children, how is that going to affect the um, the, the IO efficiency of this? Because it's going to be in memory, all that computing is going to yeah, be yeah. And in memory, so it doesn't really affect much of the IO time. All right, good, good. Um, that's exactly right. Um, but so, but if if you did, um, so so that's that's the first most important point. But you actually don't want to um, store just as a as a as an array because that will you'll need to scan it to figure out where to go. So if you store it as an internal tree, then the tricky part is when you want to split. Um, you want to split the tree, right? If you want to split the tree. If, or if, if you want to fuse two trees together, is, is this going to be hard to do? Uh, so, so let's worry about the internal memory operation here. You want to take two internal nodes and fuse them together. Um, and you know one node has always values all less than in the other node. Or you want to take one node and split it into two. Is this going to be hard if you're storing a binary tree in, inside of here? All right, so let's, let me draw, a, actually, let me use my picture of my binary tree. Okay, let's say I wanted to split this binary tree into two subtrees. What's the easiest way to do that? Left and right. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. So I, I have a very easy split here. I take the two children of the root, and this is how I split. And now, what if I wanted to fuse? I would just take the two trees and add a root and link to both, right? So the splitting and fusing is not too hard of, a, of an operation. You may, they may not be completely balanced. One may be, say, four times as big as the other, so you may want to do some rotations around the root. But you'll need, they'll be within a constant factor size of each other, so it'll be constant number of rotations to, to balance them. So in, inside of here you can do your you can do your uh, your red black tree field inside of each one. Um, um, okay so the last thing I haven't talked about is the construction time. Alright how would I do if I'm constructing an A B tree um, how many IOs does it take to construct it? What's the simplest way of constructing a, 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 if I just have these operations, not counting construction, and I want to construct a, uh, on just a binary tree, what's the easiest way to do it? I just keep inserting elements one at a time, right? How long would it take to insert all the elements into a B tree. It would take O of 
n log base b of n. Okay. Do you think this is a good way to do it? No, you can do it much better. This is n over b. This is going to be a really huge difference. So how would you construct the how you construct the b? How would you do it in, in this much time? You can, you can sort it in advance and then just go from bottom up. Right, right. So that's exactly right. You take all the elements, you use your sorting technique, and then you build build from the bottom up. You you scan it until you have um, the well. You, you have to figure out what what size the leaf should be in, but then you can scan it from the and and build the the, the um, kind of recursively on. Uh, log, you can do log this many scans over it to build each of the, the um, internal nodes. And each one takes, actually, it's simpler than that because scanning a layer of the internal nodes will be much less than n over b. So you just need to build the one layer up, and then building layers after that are going to be um, a constant factor less than size each layer, and you'll get a um, a geometric series and they the first the only cost is in building the, the sorting and then building the layer above it. Yeah. Yeah, but probably the more the more process time of this is slower, right? So so this is slower not yeah. even ever yeah, it, it should be some A and B included there as well, right? Well no so uh, this this is this is the worst case, but a more that time would be lower, much lower. Oh, the amortized time. Yeah, sorry, amortized. Well, I'm calling this insert operation, right? How many times do I call the insert operation? Yeah, but you know, many things, many times you won't even need to split when you insert, huh? Or so just insert. Yeah, it'll still just insert. But but let's say I never needed to. I happen to put them in a, in an order so that I never needed to call split or fuse except when I increase the height of the parent. Right? I only need to do it, I didn't never need to do internal operations. Each insert still costs this much time. Right? So that means I need to do it n times when I want to do it n over b times. But I can't do it n over b times because I, I don't have my data sorted into blocks. I, I can't insert as a block. I don't know how to do that. So it's it's a big difference to sort first and then build it as it is to put them in one at a time. So in internal memory, th th these are these are the same time. You can you can sort something by building a balanced tree, um, but in external memory you can't sort that. Way. So I think that's all I wanted to say. So um, yeah. So. Um, so so, uh, so so next um, let's see next Wednesday I'll I haven't decided yet I'll either do graph algorithms for um, for uh, external memory or I'll do the, the extensions to the things where you don't need to know the values of m and b ahead of time for all this I needed I needed to know the value of b ahead of time here in order to do this for the for the sorting. I need to know the value of m ahead of time. Um, there are ways to think of this without knowing m and b ahead of time, and also things where you're doing this in parallel. And I'll discuss some of those uh, slight changes to the model. Um, and, and maybe I'll move that lecture to Friday and do graph algorithms on Wednesday, or maybe I'll do graph algorithms Friday, or, um, if it, or maybe I won't do that in but if I do, I'll have to move other stuff back. So, okay. so um, have a good weekend. And if you haven't signed up for, um, I'm going to need someone to describe the next level.